Vault Hunters is a masterpiece of a mod pack that provides one of the most extensive and rewarding gameplay loops that any Minecraft experience has to offer. However, especially for players new to modded, it can at times feel confounding and difficult to manage. With this video series, I aim to provide a comprehensive guide for new players so that they can have as much fun with this mod pack as the veteran players and the content creators. I hope that I can help Vault Hunters feel approachable to as many people as possible. Let's get right into it. All right, the first thing you need to know about before we get too much further in is the quest book and the Vault Hunters Encyclopedia. Here at the bottom of the screen, this is the quest book. If you open this, this is going to help you get into more depth about everything we're going to talk about. Here's a bit of a sneak peek about what we're going to get into. Anytime you want to learn more about the game and get started, you're going to go through these different quests. It's set up very well to guide you along. And then over here is the Vault Hunters Encyclopedia. The first place we're going to look is under Useful Commands. So if we click on this Useful Commands section, you will see we have Difficulty Commands, Game Rule Commands, Party Commands, and Research Commands. For starters, we're going to look under the Difficulty setting. This setting applies to the mob difficulty inside of the vaults, so it does not apply to how much loot you get in the vaults. It ranges all the way from piece of cake difficulty all the way up to frag difficulty. So this will scale the difficulty of the mobs either by 0.25x up to 4x on the harder end. For all of the commands that I'm going to talk about in this, if you scroll over to the next pages, you will notice that you're able to click here to execute these different commands and change those settings in your own vault. You can also use the commands listed up here just like any other Minecraft commands to execute them that way if you would like. And you'll also notice over here on this side there are commands for setting the individual difficulties. So if you want to make the vaults harder for yourself but easier for someone else while you're playing in co-op, that's possible. You can also make it easier for yourself or harder for someone else. Next we'll go over the game rule commands, the first of which is the vault mode. This is an important setting that changes what happens when you die in a vault. On casual, you don't lose your items when you die. It only takes a small hit to the durability of your items instead. On normal, after level 20, when you lose beginner's grace, you will actually lose any items that are not soul bound. You will then have to use a spirit extractor to pay to get those back using vault gold. This can actually be very expensive depending on what kind of gear you're rolling with, so keep that in mind. And then Hardcore, you don't get a spirit on Vault Death and you just lose all your items. Next we have the Vault Loot commands. This allows you to scale how much loot you get in the vaults. Next we have the Vault Crystal mode commands. These allow you to scale how difficult the recipes for the vault altars are. So if you go from normal to extreme or grindy, you will either have the normal amount of ingredients required or it will double or triple the amount of ingredients you need to collect to complete that vault crystal. If you set it to infinity, this actually removes the requirement to collect anything for your vault crystal. And last of the game rule commands is the vault join require party command. This makes it so if set to true, you are required to be in a party to join a vault with someone. This is mostly just for co-op, setting up those details of how you want vaults to play out. The next section of commands are the party commands. You can create a party, invite a player to a party, remove a player from a party, or disband the party altogether. And finally, we have the research commands. These commands allow you to create research teams and invite players to them. That makes it so any researches which are unlocked are unlocked for everyone in that research team. It adds a bit of a cost to those researches, however. The first step to getting started in any Vault Hunter's world is going to be finding yourself a source of chromatic iron and vault stone. You don't need an insanely large amount of these to get started, but you do need some to get the ball rolling. You will be able to find more more easily later because you're able to mine easier with some of the mods and different tools that you receive later in the game. Additionally, you can also find more of these in the vaults. However, it is important at the beginning of the game to know how to find your first source of these. So let's get into it. There are a couple of options to find your first chromatic iron and vault stone, one of which is mining. 
You can see just like in a normal vanilla world, I've set up some sort of way to get down to the bottom of your world and branch mine. Now, anytime you're below Y negative 30, you are able to find chromatic iron and vault stone. Here, we've got a branch mining setup, just like in a normal world. If you mine long enough, you will eventually find chromatic iron and vault stone. However, this can take longer early game as your mining is much slower than my mining, which I can do here. Another method of finding your first chromatic iron is going deep underwater. You need to find areas that actually go deep enough to Y minus 30 and then going down and using things like doors to be able to breathe. I'm in creative mode right now, so that's not a problem, but you can put down a door, go inside and then keep exploring deeper and deeper. And eventually, hopefully you will expose a large enough area deep down enough that you can find your first source of chromatic iron. However, both of these methods have been beaten out in the end. This is because they removed the requirement for chromatic iron to be exposed to air in order to generate. This makes it so this final method is by far the best for finding your first chromatic iron and vault stone in your world. That method is caving. If you find a cave that goes down low enough to get you below Y minus 30, then you can simply look around and explore the cave and go spelunking until you find your first chromatic iron and vault stone. Exploring large cave systems such as this one will help you find your first chromatic iron and vault stone in no time. Or at least in less time, depending on how lucky or unlucky you get. As you are searching for your chromatic iron, be aware of this ore, which is a red herring. This is fluorite ore. This ore, if you notice, there's one, two, three, four sections, but it has these little three other sections as well. That is how you can tell apart chromatic iron from fluorite. They do have a similar coloring, but this is not the ore you're looking for. Just down here, however, is chromatic iron. Notice it has one, two, three, four sections without any of the smaller sections. The colors are similar, but you can tell the difference easily once you know what to look for. Chromatic ore usually spawns in very large veins, though they can sometimes be smaller like this one, especially if you find them while spelunking. You're looking for at least 16 chromatic iron to start. So if you end up finding a small vein like I just did here, you're just going to have to keep searching to find another one. Another good strategy to keep in mind is that night vision potions can help you spot things like vault stone and chromatic ore that might otherwise be a bit difficult to see while you are spelunking. Here is some vault stone that I wasn't able to find, but as soon as I took a night vision potion, I was able to see it easier. It's up to you whether it's worth investing in getting a potion set up and getting some night vision first or just exploring normally. You can see that the vault stone comes in large ore veins as well, just like the chromatic iron. Whenever you mine vault stone, you have a certain percentage chance for that vault stone to drop a chipped vault rock. When you combine four of these chipped vault rocks with some chromatic iron, it gives you a vault rock. When you right click your vault rock onto a vault altar, it gives you a recipe with items you need to collect in order to complete your altar. Once you've collected all the necessary items, simply drop them onto the vault altar and they will change to being green like this and saying complete. Then you'll know you've finished. And then you can click a button anywhere on the vault altar. It doesn't have to be on the top. And that will complete the crystal just like that. Now you can use this crystal inside of a portal by right clicking. And just like with a nether portal, this will open the portal to a new dimension. In this case, that new dimension is the vault dimension where you're able to do vault runs for loot and gear which we will get into shortly. Notice that I have custom blocks used for the sides of my portals. There's various different blocks you're able to use for your portals. You don't just have to use vault cobblestone or polished vault stone, including some fun decorative ones like this. To craft your vault altar, you're going to need four stone bricks, two obsidian, two chromatic iron, and one diamond. And if you ever forget how to craft something by either hitting E and being in your inventory or being in a crafting table. Either way, you're able to use JEI, which is a mod included in the pack. That stands for just enough items. And this mod allows you to search things. Like if I type in vault altar, you can click and open, and then you can see in case you've forgotten what you need in order to craft something. Now, if you're in a crafting table, my crafting table there is from refined storage. 
but if I come over to a normal crafting table, you can pull that up here. And if you have the items in your inventory, you can simply hit plus and it will bring that crafting recipe all into the top for you and you'll be able to craft it. Additionally, using JEI, an important thing to know is that you're able to right click on an item and see what kinds of things you can make using that item. This is very useful for you to know what certain items are used for and what mods need those items. Chromatic iron, for example, is needed in almost everything, and it's a resource that's a basic fundamental building block for vault hunters. Another useful feature worth knowing about is that if you have items up in your crafting grid like this, let's say you have them spread out like this across, you can press this to balance the grid and it will balance it as well as it can. However, even more useful if you just have one item up there or maybe multiple, but you want it to spread out without needing to put it out like this first, you can simply shift click this and it will spread the grid for you. Very useful all the time. You will use that a lot. Another useful thing to know about is if you hit options, controls, keybinds, and then type down here, sort, you can find the option to sort target inventory. I've set this to the middle button. And now if I come into a chest, I can simply middle click inside of the inventory and it will automatically sort it for me. This can save you a ton of time when you're looting in the vaults. You can also lock or unlock your personal inventory, which will stop you accidentally extracting or inserting items. However, if you have this unlocked, you can extract all the items from a certain inventory down into your personal inventory. Be careful when using the insert option though, because anything which is up in the top part of your inventory, so not anything in your hotbar, but these other items will be sent up. And if you don't want this to happen, well, you want to avoid hitting that button as then you'll have to resort the items back down just how you like them. Maybe that's more of a problem for someone who's a bit more OCD like myself, but either way, it's important to know about. However, if you clear the top space in your inventory, this allows for a very quick sorting of items by just hitting extract and then going to the inventory you want to sort them into and hitting insert. When you do this over and over, you can quickly sort through a large amount of items. Before we move on, it's worth noting that it's useful to keep a large amount, depending on how much chromatic iron you have to spare, of vault rocks on hand so that whenever you have to do a new vault crystal, you can simply take one out of here walk it over and put it in without having to craft a new one every time. While we're on the subject of things that are good to know when you're getting started, another useful item is a nature's compass. If you right click, you can search things up in this bar. This allows you to find things which are needed as normal resources in the game, but also especially things which are vault alter ingredients. So if I search gravel, you can see there's different options of biomes which have gravel in them. So if I type here and double click, you can see that 2638 blocks away is a gravel desert. You can then go into your mini map and put in those coordinates to make it easier to travel there. Then once you arrive at the biome in question, you can take a waystone and put it down, put in the name of where the area is, and this allows you to travel quickly to this place from your home base. Another extremely important part of Vault Hunters is the use of animal pens and animal jars. With an animal jar, you can crouch click on an animal and begin collecting more and more of them in order to add them to your animal pen. Then you simply right click on the animal pen and it adds them to it. I can't do that here because I've already added cows to mine. But this allows you to collect a decent amount to get started and then start farming these animals and collect lots of them. If you see when I crouch, I have 73 right here. In vanilla Minecraft, if I was to have 73 cows, I might already be starting to get a lot of lag. However, in this case, I'm able to farm cows and get anything that I would want from cows, just like I normally would. If you take a bucket, you're able to right click and get milk. Additionally, you can attack the cows and you'll find that you get beef and leather just like you normally would from cows. Now, if I take wheat, I can feed the cows and you'll see the number increased. Now I can't feed them again until their breeding timer goes down, but if you're giving them stacks at a time, you'll find that the count goes up plenty quick. And this is much better than vanilla farming. This is good because you're going to need lots of different animal resources for your vault altars. 
Another very useful feature in Vault Hunters is the sleeping bag. This allows you to sleep somewhere without resetting your respawn point. Simply do three wool and you have your sleeping bag. An additional tool that's really useful to know about is how the map, the mini map, and the waypoints work in Vault Hunters. You can see on the top left, I've got my mini map. It gives a lot of useful information. The most basic thing to know is that if you hit tab, you can see animals that are around. Now I have it set to display the Y value of where those animals and entities are at, but you don't have to have that setting on. Additionally, if you hit M, it pulls up your map. This is extremely helpful to see what's around you. If you've explored an area, it will reveal an even larger radius around where you've explored. So if you're trying to find your first village, which is a good thing to do in Vault Hunters, you can use this to spot them quicker. Now, if I want to mark this spot to come back and find it later, simply stand where you want to mark it. Note your Y level because it doesn't always get this correct. Hit M, zoom in to where you are, right click, hit create waypoint. Here it's got it correct on the Y level, so I can leave that and I can put in cliffside village or whatever you want to name where you're marking. Now, when I fly away, I can see this and fly to it. I can also see it on my mini map. You may want to set a hotkey for disabling and enabling the waypoints because as you're playing the game, it can get a little bit annoying when you've got tons of them all over the place. I've set mine to the star key on my numpad, so I can just hit that and it gets rid of them for me and brings them back up. Before we move on to talking about entering our first vaults and how to go about that, we have a few more things that we should take care of and talk about to be prepared. One of those things is abilities and talents. If you hit H, it brings up this window where you can see a lot of information about your character. If you notice up at the top, the second and third tabs are for abilities and talents. Let's talk about the abilities first. When you scroll left and right, it takes you along and shows you the different abilities available to you. I'm going to go through in order of importance what I think are the most important abilities. Obviously, this is subject for some variance in your play styles, but some of these are completely integral to vault experiences. The first one is the heal skill. The heal skill is pretty straightforward. It's on a cooldown, and every time that cooldown is done, provided you have enough mana, you're able to heal. Now, I have it unlocked to level 8, and that heals 9 hit points. But when you're first started, it won't heal nearly that much. You're still going to want to pick it up though, even if you don't have it very highly leveled up, it's going to be extremely important because in the vaults, you cannot heal by normal means. Just having your saturation bar and your hunger filled, that's not going to heal you passively. There's no passive regeneration in the vaults. So grabbing heal is super important. The next skill to talk about is dash. This is how you're going to be getting around inside of the vaults for the most part. It has several things that are extremely useful for it. It allows you to cover distances horizontally quickly or help you reach high up spots. You do this by jumping, hitting dash, and then placing your bucket so that you're inside the water stream. Just like that. This can help you reach really high areas very quickly in the vaults. Now the next one I would consider getting at least one point into is Vein Miner right here. This is extremely important because when you're mining points of interest in the vault, one of those points of interest you'll see later are ore POIs. Ore POIs have ores that are inside large sections of vault stone. And if you don't have vein miner, you have to sit and slowly mine one by one out of these ores, slowly searching to find the vault ores inside of it. But if you have vein miner, you can hold alt, mouse over vein miner, let go. And then when you hold down G, that's the default hotkey for your abilities, you hold it down and click, and it vein mines a large area. The final important ability to talk about is Hunter. By default, whenever you use Hunter inside of a vault, it will show you all the wooden chests in a radius around you for a short time. This isn't as useful as some of the other options that you can spec into because there's wooden chests everywhere in the vault and you don't really need help finding them. However, where Hunter gets really useful is when you click on the other options below. Observer makes it so you can see objectives inside of the vault. The next specialization gives you Gilded. That shows you Gilded chests. Then Living shows Living. Ornate shows Ornate. And Coins shows Coins inside of the vaults. We'll go into more detail about objectives later, but 
Suffice to say, Hunter can be an absolute lifesaver for completing objectives. Next up, we have Talents, the third tab here. Some of the most useful talents and the important ones that I would say that everyone should spec into are the three that you can see I've chosen in my personal playthrough. That is Strength, Haste, and Speed. Strength especially is very useful to get one or two points into early on if you're struggling taking out the enemies. Haste makes it very useful for you to mine ores quicker and also to mine wooden chests if you have wooden affinity and you're going to actually try to mine the chests. You don't want to do this until you can get enough mining speed later on. But once you have enough mining speed, haste really helps you out being able to mine those wooden chests. It's also very good for breaking spawners inside of village rooms. If you have enough haste, you can break the spawners quickly and you're less likely to get attacked there. Finally, the speed option can help you a ton by getting you through vaults quicker. Now it does cost a lot. The first level costs four and I believe every subsequent level costs four points but it's very, very useful and very worth it if you can afford the points for it. From here, you can totally have some fun reading through the different talents and abilities and looking at what matches your playstyle best. You can always respect these later, and I'll talk about that in the future. So just have some fun and see what you like using. Another important mechanic to know about before we talk about running vaults is the Vault Enchanter. This is Vault Hunter's system for enchanting items, and it's much better than in the vanilla game. This is because you don't need to find books to enchant things onto your gear. You also don't need to use as many levels either. Simply put your item into the slot, and it will show you the available enchantments for that gear item. Keep in mind that Vault Hunters has certain things disabled depending on what gear item you're talking about. Sharpness and power enchantments, for example, are disabled. And this is to help with the balancing of your damage inside of the vaults. As long as you have emeralds inside of your inventory, you can simply click on the enchantment you want and then hit enchant. You also have to have enough experience, but it tells you it only costs five emeralds and one XP level per enchantment. So there's really no reason to not enchant your gear if you've got the emeralds for it. One important thing to keep in mind is that you'll want a good source of emeralds to be able to enchant your items as often as you want. You do get some through the vaults, but it's useful to have some villagers set up to be able to trade with them. That is much easier to do in Vault Hunters though, as you can simply find a villager from a village, crouch, right click, and pick them up. Then you can set up something simple just like this with their station and blocks around them somewhere where they're safe and click them down where you want them to go. I also wouldn't bother with turning your villagers into zombies and healing them as you're going to have a better method of getting emeralds later. For a little sneak peek at that, you can take something like an Evoker spawn egg and put it in your eye spawners farm or your Kajerium farm. And this will provide you an income of emeralds. You can see that they are dropping emeralds. So down the line, you will have a quick way of having an emerald income. The final important thing to know about before going into a vault is vials. The vial is the vault hunter's alternative to a healing potion. Normal healing potions will not work for you in the vaults. You'll have to craft a vial, and the quest book helps you with this. That vial will allow you to heal on a cooldown. The way that cooldown system works is whenever you drink a vial, it consumes a charge, and this lowers down. Then you need to wait for the charge to restore. If you look, there are three options for vials. These determine how the charges get restored. The pacifist vial simply restores after a certain amount of time in the vaults. The Slaughterer's Vial restores by killing mobs, and the Goblin's Vial restores by looting chests. It's up to you to decide which one you want to use, and you can use some experimentation to see if you're able to kill mobs quick enough to make it more worthwhile than the Pacifist Vial, or if you're able to loot chests quick enough to make it more worthwhile. Alright, thank you for tuning in to part one of my comprehensive guide to Vault Hunters series. Be sure to tune in next time where I will talk about what to expect in the vaults and how to loot them effectively. In the meantime, thank you for watching.